Hey, hello everybody. Hey, we are going to continue our uh, exploration of friction. So uh, in our last video, we just talked about friction being an opposing force that will um, prevent motion or potential motion. And that's due to the physical contact between two surfaces. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, explore a little bit about why that happens. Uh, and then um, we're gonna do a, a problem on dealing with the coefficient of friction, okay? So if we have a box on a surface, okay? And we look at a magnified view, a magnified view of that surface. We'll make, we'll make the ground green here, okay? So if we blow that up, okay, so what we have is the box coming down, okay, but that is really an irregular surface. It's an irregular surface, uh, as is the ground, okay? So if here is the ground, okay, <clears throat> when those two forces, if we've got a force on the box this way, right? That means we have a relative force um, going in that direction. So uh, if this is our applied force going this way, well, what is gonna slow it down? Okay, and the answer is the force of friction. Okay, so in the same way, in the same way that we push uh, back and forth like this, if this force is greater, it's going to move this this way. And the opposite true. The opposite is true. Remember, an unbalanced force is going to result in acceleration, which is either going to speed it up, slow it down, or change uh, its direction. Okay. So, <clears throat> the more interactions, the more interactions there are in the surface, the greater the greater the uh, the force of friction. Okay. <clears throat> Now remember that if those are really intertwined there a lot, it's going to make it um, harder to move. Now, if we have this box and this ground and it's already moving, okay, so it's got a velocity that's not equal to zero, so it's actually moving, okay, then when we look at these surfaces, They have to be riding, they kind of have to be riding up on the tops of their little peaks, okay? Uh, and so there are two types, there's two types of friction. So when they're kind of moving on top, uh, that is called kinetic entry, kinetic friction. And when they're not moving at all, it's called static friction, okay? So right here, there's kinetic friction which is um, moving friction, okay? And then there is uh, static friction, which is uh, stationary. Okay, so this one right here is called kinetic friction, and this one is called static uh, friction, okay? And <clears throat> uh, the formula, okay, the formula for the force of friction is going to be, the force of friction is going to be equal to mu force normal, mu force normal. So this one right here is the coefficient of friction, okay? And this right here is the normal force. Okay, now remember um, the normal force is the force that an object, that a surface of an object is pushing 
perpendicularly, perpendicularly um, against uh, the object as it goes down. Um, if we have a flat surface, if we have a flat surface and it's not sinking into the ground or levitating off of the ground, then the normal force is equal to the weight. The normal force is equal to the weight. So for example, if we have an object again on the ground here, we're going to have the weight, which is equal to mg, and we're going to have the normal force uh, going um, up. Now remember, if these two things are equal, then we are going to have no acceleration. We're gonna have no acceleration. And since it's not moving now, okay, it is gonna continue to not move, okay? Now, we could also have an applied force, okay? And then if the applied force was to the right, if we had any friction, the friction would be to the left, okay? All right, so now, you guys, let's look at a problem here. And we're gonna use the same idea here, okay? We're going to say, uh, let's say we have a two kilogram box and we're going to have an applied force of let's say um 20 newtons an applied force of 20 newtons and we have a coefficient of friction um, that's let's say equal to 0.5 now, you guys, the coefficient of uh, friction is going to go essentially from zero, which would be no friction at all, okay, to a uh, coefficient of friction of one. Now, in special circumstances, it can go bigger than one, but typically it's just from zero uh, to one. So if we have, let's say, ice on ice, now we're talking way down there at less than 0.1 less than 0.1. If we have rubber tires, like your tires on your car or your bike on asphalt, okay, then we're way up there, let's say 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So the higher the number, the stickier it is. So wood on wood, depending on the wood and depending on how uh, much the rough the surface is, um, we're, we could have something like uh, 0.5. So again, that varies. And in a problem, you'll be either given, you'll be given the coefficient of friction or um, you're given being everything else and then you will, um, you'll figure it out, okay? All right, so kind of going back uh, to what we talked about before, in Newton's second law, we're gonna have the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to ma. And we're going to have the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay. Now remember, y is up and down. Okay. So if we look here on, on this right here, we're going to have, um, when we're drawing a free body diagram, we want everything that touches it plus gravity plus friction. Okay. So we're going to kind of, I do one. So right here, what is touching this object is the surface, right? So we're going to have force normal that's going up. Um, we're also going to have the applied force. This applied force, something is touching that and causing it to go to the right. So these are our two um, things that are touching it. Now we're going to have the force of gravity which is, remember, just equal to mg, and we're going to have the force of friction, which is going to oppose the motion or potential motion, right? So this force of friction, if it's bigger than 20, okay, if that force of friction is bigger than 20, then it's not going to move because the force has to overcome that friction. All right, so now let's just talk about this part right there and that is in the y direction so if you visualize if you visualize a box just sitting on the ground um 
I think it is a fair to say it's not moving. It's not moving up and down. It's not moving up and down. Therefore, okay, the sum of this force is being equal to MA. There, if it's not moving, it has got zero acceleration. And therefore, we can just say the sum of the forces up and down is equal to zero. Okay. Now, if we're going to use up as positive, we're going to have the normal force is going up minus the force of gravity going down, and that's going to equal to zero. Okay. Now, we can use this normal force and take this negative uh, force of gravity and bring it to the other side. So that means that's equal to the force of gravity. Now remember the force of gravity is just the weight and that is equal to mg. And we can plug in our number of two kilograms times our acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second, and that is going to be equal to 20 newtons. So our weight is 20, and in this case, our normal force is equal to 20. Okay, now that's gonna make a difference here because um, the force of friction is equal to mu force normal, mu force normal, okay? So we know, due to this, that our normal force is 20. We already know that our uh, coefficient of friction is 0.5. So we can put in 0.5 times 20, and that is going to equal to 10 newtons. So we know our force of friction uh, is equal to 10 newtons. Now, if we solve for this last part, we might have a question, is it going to move? And it's going to move if the um, applied force is greater than the frictional force, an unbalanced force, if they're going to cause it to speed up, slow down, or change direction. Well, since it's not moving at all, it would have to speed up. Okay, so we're going to say our applied force going to the right minus our force of friction, which is to the left, is going to equal to MA. So we know that our applied force is 20 newtons. We now know our um, force of friction is equal to 10 newtons, and that's going to equal to 2A. 20 minus 10 is obviously 10. That's equal to 2A. We're going to divide both sides by 2. And in this case, um, our acceleration would be 5 and that would be meters per second squared. So that is how you do a simple um, force of friction problem. Review. We're going to draw a free body diagram and we're going to separate out all the forces in the y direction and in the x direction. So we look at these two, they add up to zero because the box isn't moving up and down. Then we're going to add up these two, okay? And we know that the force applied was greater than the frictional force, and therefore um, it would move. And in this case, since our force to the right was um, positive, um, it would move, and it would move at an acceleration of five meters per second squared. All right, I hope this helped, and we'll see you next time.